Well, good evening, y'all. It's Mary from Stamps and Lingers, and it is Sunday night, so why don't we do a video and make a fun project? Uh, give me half a second, and we'll get... Uh, let me check over here off to the side and make sure that we're transmitting and that my internet isn't letting us down. Hang on. Do, do, do. There it goes. Looks like we're on and we've got some folks watching. Yay! All right. So I know people start checking in. Hey, Karen, how are you tonight? Hi, Kathy. Thank you for joining. Hey, Jean and Sharon and Bill and Janet. Appreciate y'all having a little party. I'm assuming you're having dessert. Hello, Denise. How are you tonight? Hi, Pam. Hi, Shirley from the north part of Georgia. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Aaliyah. I'm glad y'all could come tonight. I'm sorry I didn't make the notification. I <laughs> This morning when I was posting everything, I thought I hit every avenue, but apparently I had not. Hello, Donna and Deborah and Rosie. Good to see you. Nine more wake-ups until Santa comes. Thank you for that, Rosie. Yes, I am, in fact, very behind. But, you know, I guess it is what it is, because you know what? The 25th is going to show up. Christmas is going to happen, regardless of my readiness, isn't it? Hi, Patty Joe. Hi, Donna. Hi, Sandra. Glad you guys could join tonight. Hello, Sue. All right. So we I've already discussed the fact that gift cards are a thing I give. I just do. I always feel a little guilty, like I'm sort of phoning it in. But then I think, okay, we'll make a cool card. So as I was browsing Pinterest a few weeks back, I ran across a... Uh, Hi, Cindy and Patricia. Appreciate you joining. Dunedin, Florida. Ah, um, I figure I saw this card that she made, and it is a gift card holder that is also a fun fold. And since I like fun folds, and I know you guys like fun folds, I decided to make one of my own. So, what you have here is a card that fits very nicely in a regular medium size envelope, so that's handy. But it opens up like so and has a handy gift card holder right in the center panel. The thing that is so nice about this particular one is that the fun fold itself is crazy, crazy easy. Um, so I think you are going to enjoy it. Oh, my notes, so that I know what colors I've used. I think you'll like it, and we are going to go ahead and get started. Now, she used the um, Santa's sign post. Hi, Amy. Hi, Brooke. Glad you could join. Hi, Donna. Appreciate you coming from Canada. Uh, she used the Santa signpost uh, and the Memories and More card pack, but I decided to go with some All is Bright DSP, multiple designs of it, and the very cute Making Christmas Bright and Bring on the Presents stamp sets. So let us commensurate, shall we? All right, here we go. Now, all of these card cuts will be on my blog tomorrow, so you don't need to worry about writing them down frantically. We do have some things. I've got my medium envelope and some paper ready for my envelope flap. And then I have a crumb cake card base, several pieces of red, uh, real red for mats, and then multiple versions of the All is Bright DSP and a little bit of Whisper White. And then the all important Call Me Clover panel. And this is the one that does the actual work. This is the fold out panel. And it's four and a quarter by nine and three quarters. So let us go ahead and get that folded, scored and folded. And I'm gonna use the score tool. You can uh, use your trimmer blade if you prefer, but I like the score tool for this. So we're going to just stick it up in the corner. Hey, Sue. Um, we're just gonna stick it up in the corner and we're gonna make a quick score at three and one quarter inches. And again, you don't have to be real ham-fisted. Sometimes I get a little carried away and my cardstock uh, takes the brunt, but I'm gonna try not to. So you've got three and a quarter and six and a half. And that is all we need that baby for. So we're going to put it back where it goes. And we're gonna give this a quick fold. And you can see it's already coming together quite quickly. Very, very simple. You don't even need a big shot for this one, people. 
don't even need a big shot. All right, so we'll set that aside and then we'll find the larger piece of real red and the larger piece, don't steal that one, Goofy. A larger piece of our All is Bright DSP. You can see the other side. And you could really even use this one, but I kind of like this more ge geometric shape. So I'm going to use a little bit of real red. Hey, Denise. Hi, Paula. Glad you could join. Cash for Christmas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to it, Deborah. They all want cash. They all want cash. But seven? Wow. I'm sure I'm sure if he sat on Santa's lap, really, he would tell Santa he wanted cash. Hmm. All right, so we're just going to get that on, and then we'll go ahead and put it onto our crumb cake card base. This is a great fold. Um, it's really good if you've got DSP kind of left over because it doesn't take huge pieces of the DSP, but it lets you kind of use a bunch of different designs, which is always fun because really one of Stampin' Up's best things, in my opinion, is our designer paper. It's truly, truly gorgeous, right? All right, now we have another, I have another mat, and we're going to mat our Z fold on there eventually. All right. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's see, we can, we're going to do that after we get a few more panels on. Okay, so this is pretty simple. This is how it folds out. We have a, a piece on the front and we have a piece on the inside for sentiments. And then in the middle is going to be our piece that is going to end up being our, um, yes, just lost the word, our gift card holder, okay, like so. So let's go ahead and put that one on first. And then we'll do some stamping. Then we'll do some stamping. All right. Now, y'all, I'm going to tell you what, if I sound a little bit uh, more subdued than usual, I won't lie, I'm not feeling real great tonight. My stomach is a little upset. So, I may not be quite as perky as I usually am, and I will apologize in advance for that. Now, for our gift card holder. I'm going to use tear and tape adhesive. You can see it's the same width and I just kind of found a, a height that worked. Um, but I'm going to use the tear and tape because I think it'll get some, uh, it's going to get a little activity. So I'm just going to put that right on the edge like so and snip that off right at the top. And we're going to put it on all three edges. Notice I said three. Don't put it on the top because otherwise, well, it's going to be very, very difficult to put your gift card in there. Just saying. Makes sense. But it's one of those things that after you've done it and you adhere it all down, you go, oh, huh. Well, that didn't work out quite how I planned. So I'm just giving you that tip ahead of time. You can see I've put it on the bottom and both sides, but not on the top. So we'll just pull this cover off like so. Thank you, Leah. I um, it was actually kind of a sudden onset about 7.30. I started feeling bleh, kind of bleh, but here we go. All right. Now, tear and tape is not forgiving like <laughs> liquid glue, so you kind of want it where it needs to be before you, you know, commit. Don't commit too early, okay? And then you can see that the gift card will fit in there quite nicely. See? Et voila. All right. We'll put that aside for just a second. Now let us do some stamping. 
And I'm gonna pull my Stampapotamus out just because, well, because I can. <laughs> Let's go with because I can. And I have my foam pad and my magnet in here, all right? We're gonna pull out the, um, the light string, the light string here. Thanks guys, I appreciate it. Jane, you had it yesterday. I'm hoping that I don't have any its. I'm just really kind of hoping I have no its. All right, so we're gonna lay that down and then I'm going to put a magnet here. Put a magnet here so that it will stay in place and then we'll pick it up and we're going to use, where did you go? Some memento, some tuxedo black memento ink. All right, and give a little pushy pushy, a little pushy pushy, like so. There we go. And that looks good, so we're gonna leave it right there. I'm gonna clean off my stamp like that put this image away and then I'm gonna take the I don't know I guess this would be the wire maybe let's go with wire and we're gonna put it I should put it right side down though and let's see we'll also get our sentiment out we can do we can get him ready to rock may your Christmas be so this way we're getting our layout how we want it to be. And we also need to be sure we've got room for our big bulbs, right? Because otherwise we're going to run out of space and that's no bueno. Oh God. Oh Amy, that's not good news. I don't need the barfies. It's the wrong time of year for that. All right, so let's be sure we're going to have room for Mary and Bright. Like that. Okay. All right, so the layout, I like it. We can do that. Uh, let's see, we'll take this down because we'll start with the sentiment. Pick him up. And we're going to sentimentize this in Call Me Clover. Now I'm just gonna tell you what, I don't use Call Me Clover a lot. I don't really know why, because it's a very pretty green, but it's kinda, for some reason, it's like out of my cross check, I don't know. I'm always reaching for shaded spruce and mossy meadow, and poor Call Me Clover just sits there going, me, 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 why not me? Couldn't you take me? All right. Lay, lay flat, lay flat, you. Lay flat. Okay. And we'll clean him off and get him out of the way. And then we'll go to our next image, which will be our Christmas wire. Our wire. Get a little bit of wire going there. We'll pick him up. And he's going to be in black. set him aside and then let's see we're going to put Mary and bright like so hmm, he's sticking to me where'd you go Mary and where's and where did and get off to hmm. oh there you are did you see that thing trying to hide that's how you lose Stamps, I'm just saying. All right, so let's get those put on. And we're going to do the f Mary and the Bright in real red. Come here. Lay back down. So, I like the Stamparatus for this because sometimes when you're using these um, solid stamps with sentiments inside them, you don't always get a good image the first time, but with the Stamparatus it really doesn't matter because you can always go back. But of course, 
See, now you know how that would have worked, right? If I had used a block and tried to stamp it like that, no, no bueno. It would not have worked. You can count on it. But since I put it in the Stamparatus, I told it to go up there. Ah, uh, yeah, you're a funny girl. Hi, Beverly. Well, it minded you, Miss Amy. It minded you. All right, we'll put them aside and get and back and center him up like that. Pick him up and we're gonna do him in Call Me Clover again. And I'm feeling like I probably need to wipe off my panel before I get green more places than I want. All right, I think I can do the rest without the Stampopotamus right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take the little tiny guy, and he is the, he's the winding. We're gonna plant him on there to kind of ground those lights to the wire, because otherwise they're just floating in space, which of course doesn't work, does it? Okay, those are done. And then we'll give them a little glow, a little glow. We're gonna glow them a little bit with some, the classic glow color, pineapple punch. <laughs> That's how I make it. <laughs> hey Karen, the Stamparatus is the perfect tool, but it does have a bit of a learning curve and you just have to kind of practice with it. So I'm just taking this glow image and stamping it underneath each light like that and then while I'm waiting for everything to dry I'm going to take I'm going to close my ink pads and I'm going to take my stamp and write markers and I'm going to color my lights But I'm not going to be a wuss and use this fine tip the whole time. Goodness, Mary. Oh, my goodness. All right, so we're going to go yellow, red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red. Like that. And then just come back and do yellow, yellow, red, green, yellow. Red, green, yellow. See, this is very important that you not mess up the color order because if you did, what would, oh my God. I, okay, a little bit of Call Me Clover to finish those off like that. All right, there we go. So this panel is done and we're gonna put it right on the front with some liquid glue. Some liquid glue. Hi, Holly. How are you today? <coughs> Has everybody mailed all of their Christmas gifts that need to be mailed? I can assure you, I have not. So this is a no judgment zone. If you haven't, <laughs> you are amongst friends. I figure if you don't wait until the last second and have to pay exorbitant extra shipping costs, then... You know, it's not really Christmas, right? Okay, so that's there. That's panel number one. And now we're gonna do the final panel. And for that, <coughs> I'm going to pull out the Bring on the Presents set. And you see what I have here is a sticky note mask. And I'm going to use that today. We're going to stamp our, we're going to get rid of that guy, put him where he belongs, or he'll be the next missing in action guy. Okay, so let me show you where we're aiming, what our end result is. This is the panel that we're working on now, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm first going to stamp this uh, bow in black, and then I'm going to cover it with the mat, or the little mask I made, and then I'm going to add the uh, ribbon image. Okay, easy peasy. Yeah, this one is very fun, Karen, and it's quick. 
and especially at a time of the year when when we've got extra DSP sitting around, it's a perfect opportunity to chop that up and not, you know, savor it so much. It's paper, people. Cut it up. All right, we're going to get that stamped down. Okay. And then we're going to get the ribbon out. Let's put our mask on. that and then we'll use this stripey ribbon okay and we'll turn it around and because I'm a little anal about it we're going to try to make sure it looks like a real ribbon like that okay okay and now the reveal the big reveal ah ooh ah i love it when it works i love it even better when it works when i'm on camera and get this stuff put away let's put these away and then we're going to do a little bit of coloring with our light and dark real red have you noticed how pink these color these caps are when i pull these out i'm like oh my goodness that's not the right color and then yet it is you see what i'm saying it, it totally is okay so we're going to pull out real red light and dark and i'm going to just start by coloring with my light real red see how i had to check there to be sure i wasn't borking it yeah we're going to do a few of these loops with the light. Not too many. My friend Sue, who's watching, she's probably getting out her scorecard. And the Russian judge gives her a six. Okay. So it's not, this really isn't rocket science, I don't think. I mean, it could be rocket science, but it isn't the way I do it. But I did try to learn from my friend. So the trick with blends is you do not want to go too, get too far ahead of yourself. You want to do just a few sections at a time with your first color so that you can come back with your blending color because this, these pens blend best when the ink is still wet. We'll just keep turning it and we're turning and burning folks turning and burning y'all we had prime rib for dinner we we've uh i've had a hankering for smoked prime rib there's a there's a restaurant in florida down by eglin air force base and i cannot think of the name of it but they had smoked prime rib on their menu and i had it once and it was quite good so i've been agitating to do a smoked prime rib and so we bought a small one at Publix the other day and we did it like tonight and boy was it yum oh yum oh no I do not have food poisoning I'm certain unless my husband is out in the shop throwing up pretty sure it's not food poisoning there was nothing wrong with that rib it was very good um, it's kind of scary because I have a really, really good recipe. And if you guys are making comments, you're right. I'm not actually looking right now because I'm busy coloring. I've got my tongue between my teeth so that I don't mess up. Okay. I'm going to take a quick gander back and see if you guys are trying to tell me something. I think I might need that bow ribbon. Yes, ma'am. I think you do. I should do a blending class. Actually, I think we should get Sue Prather to do a blending class online. She should do a Facebook Live. Because she's really good at it. I get by with a little help from my friend. But basically, really, all I'm doing is I'm taking the light, the light blend and coloring it in. And then I come back with the dark blend. And, and I kind of just run it around the edges and to where you know in the centers where I think 
there might be some shadow. True, real artists and stuff would be like, okay, the sun is coming from over here, and so this area is light, and this area is dark. No, I was an engineering major, not an art major. That's beyond me. And also way too much work. It's paper, people. It's a paper and ink bow. Okay. Now we'll just use a little bit of the dark on the edge. And I'm calling that a day. I was calling that a day. Now I'm gonna pull the Stamparatus back out. And we'll put our Sentimente on. And we're gonna use a gift just for you. And I'm just gonna kinda, you know. Eyeball straight. We'll pick it up. And we're gonna do him in Call Me Clover. Yeah, the smoked prime rib was really good. Um, and you could actually taste the smoke. And the, the thing we found online was to be sure to not over smoke. It doesn't need a, a ton of smoke. So we put one, one batch of chips in and it only cooked, it only took like two and a half hours to cook. It was a four pound roast. We got a real small one. Um, only took about two and a half hours to cook and it had just, and we didn't replace the chips, so it had just enough smoke to it um, to be really, really nice. Um, it was, it were good. Prime rib is my favorite of the meat cuts too. All right, so that is all we're doing on the third panel. So let's get a little liquid glue out and put him on our third panel. And then really all we have to do is add some more layers of DSP. And this card is in the books, people. See how easy, don't you love something that is going to be a wow? It really is going to be a wow when the person who's gonna get this opens it. And we are the only ones that have to know how easy it was. That's my favorite kind of card right there. All right, now it's important, let's go ahead and put him on his mat. And you could use your tear and tape again if you wanted, but I'm partial to the liquid glue. And we're just eyeballing it. You know how I am about matting. I'm always going to mat if I can. All right. Now, the thing you need to remember is when they've got this card, this crookedy card. Hang on a second. Let me do a little adjusting. See if I've still got time to adjust. All right. Well, that's going to bother me, but it won't bother the person very much. Once they get it, you got to remember they're also going to open up this way, right? They're going to look everywhere because it's going to be so cool. So don't forget to decorate these back panels. And I just use a coordinating DSP. No particular rhyme or reason, but it's fun. And we're going to do that. Uh, actually, we used apple wood. Julie, a little apple wood. One year, last year, when we were at Sam's, Sam's had this big old box of wood smoking chips. And it had... Um, it had a bag of apple and a bag of maple and a bag of hickory oak, I think. Um, and so that was kind of fun because you could you could play with the three different flavors. But do you think they have that this year? Oh no. But we did finally find some maple and some apple at Lowe's. Maple is the one we kind of like the best. It's a nice, nice kind of a soft smoke. Okay, so there we go like so. 
And then we'll just put some liquid glue on the back of this mat. And adhere it to our card base. Like so. And this one's a little sloppy, folks, so this one probably will never see the light of day. But I think it shows you how to make it. So there it is, open wide, and your gift card, or cash. I suppose you could wad up a, a you know, $15 or so, or $10 bill and stick it right in there. And it will go right smack in your medium envelope so let's decorate that right quick like a bunya and I really like that little light string so we're gonna use it again yeah aha uh -huh. thanks Phil it's great great for you to join I should send this off-center one to you my friend cuz talk about off-center mm-hmm yeah that would be my bud Phil a little bit off-center okay <clears throat> We're just going to repeat that light strand across the front, like so, and then put that away before I make a mess, and we'll pull those, uh, our Stampin' Right markers again, and give that a quick color. Let's see, we'll start with green, and go red, yellow, green. Red, yellow, green. Red, yellow, green. That's probably not the same order I did, but that's okay. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And our real red. I like this. I really do love this little, this little image right here is one of my favorites. There, okay. And then we'll put some DSP on the envelope flap, and we'll be done skis. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Hey, Sharon, glad you could join. Karen, thank you, you're sweet. Don't we think, I think maybe we are usually our own worst critics, but Now, the cool thing, what I love about this particular fun fold is there's a lot of opportunities throughout any year to give a gift card as a present. So change up the DSP, change up your color scheme, change up the sentiments, make this exact same card however many times you want, and it's perfect every single time for holding on to your gift cards to give, right? Alrighty, and there we go. Another gift card holder for your Christmas gifting. Fun, huh? And easy. Easy is very important to Mary these days. Alright guys, I am not going to prolong this tonight for the reasons that we discussed at the beginning. So I will see you next week. And I hope you have a wonderful week. Remember, Christmas is two is two weeks from tamale. Tamale, okay? That means you don't have hardly any time left. It's time to get cracking, time to be baking and wrapping and sending and shipping. And we will see y'all next Sunday. Thanks for spending time with me tonight, guys. Bye-bye.